How else is chronic pain uh, perpetuated in the traditional health environment? Well, has anyone ever seen the movie The Matrix? <laughs> Raise your hand if you guys seen the movie The Matrix. I kind of want to get a knife. I love that movie. And if you guys haven't seen it, you should. Um, if you have seen it, you, you should see it again. And I want you to think about The Matrix being like the biomedical model. Okay? Because I see a lot of similarities, and sometimes I feel like I'm in the matrix at all times. <laughs> and I think the biomedical approach is everywhere. Even now in this very room, you can see it when you look around your medical offices. See those spinal models, the anatomy charts. You can feel it when you talk to your orthopedic manual therapist or your orthopedic surgeon, or when you're interpreting those imaging results for patients. It's a world that has been pulled over the eyes of the chronically sensitized patients to blind them from the truth. The truth. The truth that they have become a slave of the structural world of medicine. It is a world that teaches them there is no hope for cure for chronic pain as long as your patients have structural faults. It's a philosophy that if they do not get better with the biomedical approach to care, these patients have to live with their pain and never complain because nothing more can be done. Now that's kind of the biomedical approach. Uh, I think the biopsychosocial approach, like we've already touched upon, can provide more hope and insight for these patients versus that fateful, the fateful outcomes of structural thinking, the matrix, okay? <laughs> um, so I think we need to sit down and offer these patients the red pill, okay? Um, we have the red pill or the blue pill. The blue pill represents that biomedical model. And not all patients are ready for the red pill. I had one patient just two days ago, came in, arms are crossed, and um, why are you here, and how, how can I help you? you know, I like to kind of see what they're going to say. I'm here because I need to appease my physician. I'm like, oh, okay. And um, you know, we're talking about his pain, and, and I basically, like you said, you can take a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Um, I try to, you know, break down those walls a little bit, try to engage the patient, try to validate, but he was not having it. He walked out. I said, well, you can leave if you'd like, and he walked out. Now, that has not happened to me. It's happened to me once in, I think, seven years. It just happened two days ago. I thought that was very ironic. Um, but uh, if, if you can offer, like, so I feel like I'm Morpheus in the Matrix, and he offers to provide the truth about their situation, which means waking up from the dream world state, okay? Take the blue pill and go back to where you came from. Take the red pill and see how far down the rabbit hole goes. Um, what I might um, guess is that many of you guys who are seeing more acute patients aren't quite ready to hear anything about taking a red pill right away because they're still looking for answers structurally. By the time patients come to me, they're usually pretty desperate for some different answers. So I think I have a little bit of an advantage um, being a part of a pain management program, um, but it doesn't mean that you guys can't do it. You just start chipping away. And you're gonna sense a lot of failure, I believe, but what I think is that even if it feels like a failure in, in front of you, you don't see an observable change, something is happening in there. You've had an impact. And I have patients who I didn't feel like I was having an impact until maybe two, three year follow-ups. They, they keep coming back a year later and they get a little bit more knowledgeable and a little more open about the, the pain science approach or the biopsychosocial approach.